you served in the Coast Guard, as you mentioned. Um, there's some photos here uh, of the Coast Guard that we'll, we'll get to, but um, tell us uh, a little bit about uh, why you chose the Coast Guard uh, during the Korean conflict, and uh, first of all, why you chose the Coast Guard, and then um, what you did in terms of schooling and where you served uh, while you are at the Coast Guard. Well, I knew I was going to be drafted, and I didn't have any problem with that other than I didn't know how long it would be. And secondly, I wasn't sure that I could go to school and get any advancement, which would give us another 5 or $10 a, a month to make our house payment. And so I was ready to join the Navy or the Air Corps, and uh, some young men come in the used car lot. I was selling used cars at Barber Ford. And we're talking about what we're going to do. And I said, well, I guess I'm going to enlist in either Navy or Air Corps. And they said, well, but I said, it's four years, and I really don't want to be gone four years if I don't have to. And they said, well, you can get in the Coast Guard for three years. And that got my attention, went right down to the recruiting office. And uh, he said, well, we're booked up for six months. And so I was visiting with him and ready to leave. And uh, got a call, they got a call from the doctor that he didn't approve one of their recruits that they were taking to send to California the following week. And he looked at me and said, there's your chance if you want to list right away. And I said, can I have one day? I, I really need to go to where I work and explain what I'm up to to them. And he said, you'll be back. And he gave me a time the next day. And so talked with Mr. Barber, and he said, you do what you need to do and what you think you should do, and, and that'll be fine. Just come back when you're through. And so we went back and, and uh, said, I was would like to do that. So I got past the physical, and then I had to pass the color blind test. And that was a book that you opened and had all these dots, and it, it had numbers in these dots. I couldn't see any numbers. And the kid shook his head. He said, don't, when you, he said, it's too late for me to flunk you out, but when you get there and they enter you in, you go through your physical again, they're going to have this book. You listen to where those numbers are. 3, 42, 21. And so I listened Four or five guys ahead of me. By the time he got to me, it was three, four, and didn't see a thing. And he said, now, whatever you do, don't ask to be in electronics because it's all color-coded, and you you just won't work for you. So that's what happened. So after basic training, um, they were placing us and sending us out to places of that they needed us. They were recommissioning destroyer escorts that the Navy had mothballed, and they were patrolling off Korea with them. And uh, that was one of the reasons they were enlisting so many Coast Guardsmen. And so I, they, I went up to the, the yeoman, the, the office kid, and uh, he said, what do you, what'd you do before you got in here? I sold used cars. He said, Joe, what do you do to the used car salesman? And I said, I'd like to go to diesel engine school if I could. I thought I can use that around the garage and all and the theory of it. And uh, actually, the diesel engines that powered those destroyer escorts were the same engines that powered the Mackinac. So that would be kind of fun. So they shipped me to Ella, uh, to Groton, Connecticut, where the, the Coast Guard had a big training station for radio operators, gunners, mates, and whatever, and uh, went through diesel engine school there and come back, had a, had a few days leave, and then I had to report in uh, to Cleveland Coast Guard headquarters. I had asked to be on the lakes if I could when I graduated from engine school, and, the, and I got it. And so I went to see the personnel officer, and I said, I, I've got a house in Lake Michigan, and I've got house payments, and it would sure be nice if you have an opening on Lake Michigan. I'd like, I'd like a shot at it. And he looked at me, and he said, 
what'd you join this outfit for? I says, because I didn't want to go to the Army. <laughs> well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> and I thought, I'll wind up on a lighthouse in Alaska through all this shenanigans. But anyway, uh, the kid, the yeoman, typed up all my papers, and he said, how do you want to go? Typically, they will give you a, a coupon deal, and you just hand that, and the government pays your way. Or you can go on your own, and normally you can save a little money that way. I said, I'll go on my own. I said, uh, I said, I'll give you a map. It's a little town way up in Michigan. I said, where is it? He said, Muskegon, Michigan. I said, I can find it. And so I checked in, and the, the reason apparently that, that I got to go there is all their boats. They had three boats there, and they were all gas-driven, and they were due to get their first diesel-powered patrol boat. And I guess they figured, you know, I could at least check the oil in that. So I was in. And uh, I, I, there was a, a chief mechanic and then a second one and me, the fireman. So uh, whenever one of them got transferred, got promoted and transferred, I slipped into his place. So it worked. I never had to leave. looked like I might be transferred at one time, but it didn't work. So. It worked out well, and in uh, December 4 of 55, it was time for me to, to, to leave, and the officer in charge of the group at Grand Haven, was, uh, I was, we were under them, he did his best to, to uh, talk me into re-enlisting, and I said, no, I don't think I need to do that, so here I am. There you go. And you had a, some um, pretty interesting experiences when you were in the Coast Guard, and I've got an article here, if I can put my finger on it. Um, I'll let you take the mic here. Well, hang on a second. So this is an article from uh, the Muskegon Chronicle of February 6, 1954, Coast Guard Rescue Shivering Pup. And I'll just read this article. We'll get a shot on it on the screen. Coast Guard... A uh, crash boat returns to its berth after the crew pulled a dog from the icy waters of Muskegon Lake. A uh, Coast Guardman on the channel wall used boat hooks to push ice flows aside to permit the wa um, boat to enter. Hines is the name of the dog. The rescued pup is a shivering, sad little dog as he huddle huddles in a jacket one of the crew buttoned around him. Uh, EN2C was is that your... That's you. Kenneth Elhart offers the half-frozen pup a pan of warm milk as he sits under the radiator. I didn't know dogs drink milk. <laughs> and uh, and Jerry Bernard, an employee of Sand Products Corporation, where Heinz is official mascot, reclaims the pet, wraps him in a blanket, and sighs in relief. Um, so, you remember that? Yes. There in the winter in Muskegon Lake... Uh, the car ferries run all winter. Is did the Highway 16 and Milwaukee Clipper delivering uh, rail cars and automobiles? So they kept a, a center was open in the channel, and the fishermen and and pets would get out on this ice, and then all of a sudden the wind would change, and it would blow it out, and they'd be afloat on these ice packs. Uh, fishermen too, so it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it was quite often that we'd have to go and and rescue them out from the ice flow. So that's how that all came about. You also uh, experienced something there that uh, very few people have seen. Uh, more people, particularly uh, that live along the coast of Lake Michigan, see occasionally, and it's a phenomenon that happens only at certain times. You want to explain what that is? I don't know what it is. I really don't. Other than you swear, you can almost see the traffic lights across the lake. I called one night at 2 in the morning to the officer in charge. I said, Chief, there's some lights out there. I don't know whether it's a cruise ship or what it is. And he come over and he said, no, this happens occasionally. Whether it's the atmosphere or what, I'm not sure. But it does happen. A lot of people don't believe it, but it does. Yeah, yeah. You called me one night and said, Jeff, on a Sunday night, about 10 o'clock, go outside with your binoculars and take a look. And sure enough, we could see the 
weather mark buoy halfway across the lake like it was just 20 feet away, blinking solid red. So, Dad, let's talk a little bit more about your experience um, while you were in the Coast Guard when you are in Muskegon. Uh, I've got a picture of here of this. Uh, this looks like a car carrier. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that uh, car carrier and what you remember about that? Yes. In fact, our senior class trip we took on that from Muskegon to Milwaukee and back. Uh, and what was it called? The Milwaukee Clipper. The Milwaukee Clipper was a little bit like a mini cruise ship. It had it did have uh, berthing, but it had a dance band and and a lot of partying and so on. Uh, and run uh, twelve months a year, and it did haul some cars along with with the Highway 16, which is another carrier. And uh, the funny thing, the captain on this boat, Captain Hoxie, was a very proud guy, and he'd call the Coast Guard station. Um, the Muskegon Chronicle would call the Coast Guard station, want to know if the car ferries and the clipper was making it through the ice coming into the harbor. And the, and the officer in charge, Chief First, said, whatever you do, don't say they're stuck in the ice because Captain Hoxie is very proud, and he'll not be happy if you say he got stuck in the ice. I'll never forget that. Everybody's got their story. <clears throat> Everybody's got to stay in business, right? 